We got nine dollar pitcher specials. We also got three fifty shooter specials. Ask Austin your bartender for more details. And while we're at it, give Austin a big round of applause. Ladies. I love that guy. You should love him too. I'll be your host, Jesse Jarvis. Yes, that sucks for all of you. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. Fuck it. I don't care. But uh, I very really appreciate you all being here. I really love you, Jesse. Your love means nothing to me. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I um, I went to uh, I went to my girlfriend's high school reunion recently. Um, which, by the way, if you're thinking about going to a high school, yeah, 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 you were there. You were there for the whole thing. Here's how I'll tell. Here's how my night went. So, like, by the way, if you're planning on going to a high school reunion, don't. It's fucking stupid. It's a terrible idea. Like, it's, here's the thing, high school reunions are exactly like high school, you know? The cool kids are in the cool corner doing their cool people things, girls are gossiping in the other corner, the creepy gym teacher's getting all handsy during the conga line, like, it's a book. which by the way, if there's a conga line, like, don't fucking go to that party, right? It's <laughs> the worst idea ever. But uh, this, this night was extra special. Here's why it was extra special. I don't, I don't know if I told you about this that night. Uh, uh, I got to meet my girlfriend's ex-fiance. Yeah, that was a nice, fun thing that happened. So, like, and here's the thing. Heard a lot of things about this guy. Not all good. Didn't know what to expect. But you know what? I, I'm respectful. I go up to him. I want to shake the man's hand. And as I'm shaking his hand, it dawns on me. I'm like, oh, holy shit. This guy's fucking beautiful. God damn it. Really, like, like... This guy had five inches of height on me and his like insane chiseled jawline. He looked like Captain America if he worked at a car dealership. <laughs> this guy was gorgeous. But then like, so we leave the reunion and uh, as we're in the car, we're driving away and I just turned to my girlfriend and she said, what the hell is wrong with you? She, she says, what do you mean? I was like, your ex-fiance, he's gorgeous. Get your shit together. She's like, like, what do you mean? I like being with you. I'm like, yeah, well, according to biology, you were fucking lying to yourself. What is wrong with you? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, I'm just saying, from a scientific standpoint, this makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, 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 come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. Come on. Come on. Play's gonna play. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Well, I was telling my girlfriend, I was like, from a scientific standpoint, it makes no sense. You know, it's like, if, you're ha if you had your choice between Thor or Greg from accounting, <laughs> Vegas, I'd say you're going to choose the dude with the two hammers, you know what I mean? Like, that's just how that works. Get your shit together. But that fiance, he had a, he had a kid since they broke up. That was, uh, that was crazy. Like, I, like, I... I, I, I don't, I'm at that age now where it's like now people are thinking, oh, you should start thinking about having kids sometime in the near future. That's a terrible idea. I'm too fucking dangerous. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, but here's the thing. The, the, are there any parents here, by the way? No. Yeah, yeah, you're drinking on a Wednesday night. I hope not. I hope not. But here's the thing. Like, the, the idea of having a toddler, you know, the, 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 the idea and like the stress and lack of sleep that you get from raising a small child, that's not the part that scares me about being a parent. I just don't want to fucking have a teenager. Like, teenagers fucking suck. Uh, like, I, I was a little shit in high school and like, I was one of the good ones, you know? Because when you have a high schooler in your home, they immediately become really, you know, they're hormonal, they're full of teen angst, they hate you, like, everything that goes wrong in their life be suddenly becomes your fault. That's bullshit. That's like, that's like somebody blaming you for a felony that they committed. It's not like, so yeah, yeah, I slapped a U.S. Air Marshal on a flight one time, and they locked me up. Thanks for nothing, asshole. And then you give them gas money. That's what I'm doing like. Man, I, um... This happened the uh, this happened Monday. I'm still kind of processing this. I was I was at like one of those like hip cool coffee shops, you know, where like 
people look cool and say cool things, you know? Like, like, like one of those cool places where like, we use recycled banana peels for our coffee filters. Like that kind of place. <laughs> but as I'm, like, like I got my coffee and like as I'm enjoying my coffee, like this guy, he gets some, it's 75 degrees outside. It's, it's beautiful and this dude's wearing a fucking scarf and I hate this guy already. It's like, I just want you to choke on a vegan corn dog and just die already. Like, I don't like you, I don't like you. And then he made a comment that just, just reiterated my hate for me. He, he goes to the barista, perfectly nice guy, and he just says, do you have any coffee that's ethical? <laughs> and the bartender's like, uh, the barista's just like, what do you mean? Well, no, 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 like, do you have any coffee that's made ethically? And he can just imagine what is, what's in his head. He's just like, well, I didn't kill any Jews while making the Seattle roast. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> no Jews died, so I'm good, I'm good, right? And then he followed this up with saying, you know what, I used to drink coffee just however, I didn't care about the social aspects of it. And now that I drink ethically uh, made coffee, I just feel like I can talk to people again. <laughs> what? You're, like, here's the thing, if the, if, whether it's Maxwell House or like some Starbucks, if that affects the way you communicate with humans, like you're a fucking asshole. Like, that, like that's bullshit. That's like, to, here's the thing, this guy is like on his iPad looking up Nonprofit websites, probably. <laughs> and like, all I can think is everything that gives you some form of comfort has a has some sort of suffering behind it, you know? Like something had to die to make that dude's trendy urban outfit or boots happen, you know what I mean? Like something had to die, whether it was an animal or my respect for you, like something fucking died, you know? But fuck. I uh I don't know, I just assume that guy's like one of those conspiracy theorist types. Anybody, like, any of you guys conspiracy theorist types? Yeah? Yeah? Nice, slow, nice. Here's the thing, I wish, I, like, I really wish I could be one of those conspiracy theorist types. I really do. Not, not because I believe in any of that stuff, I just want to have a sense of purpose again, you know? <laughs> Things got weird after college. <laughs> like, I just want to have a sense of purpose. Wait, so, do you have, like, a favorite conspiracy theory? Is there, is there one where like that's your favorite one to reach So like if somebody like posts about on BuzzFeed or Rachel Maddow talks about it, like click like, do you have one? Oh, 9-11 stuff. 9-11, that's a popular one. <laughs> I didn't like 9-11. <laughs> <But, laughs> here's the thing about the like conspiracy theorists, I'm sure much like yourself, they're very passionate about all of that stuff. They're so and the, to be a conspiracy theorist, I just think it would be fun to argue with somebody who gets all of their information from the internet. That would be so much fun, you know? They're like, oh yeah, well if you look at the moon landing, you know it's a hoax because there's no way they could have done the moon landing in the time portrayed by the media. But uh, if it did happen, there were definitely aliens there. All right, so like, you don't believe that this thing happened. But if it did happen, you know for a fact that there were aliens there? Yeah, 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 you've been on Reddit, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, that, to me, that's ridiculous. To me, that's like somebody saying, listen, I don't believe Space Jam was a thing that actually happened. But if Space Jam happened, the Monstars were totally paid off by the Illuminati to throw that down. Totally happened. Alright then, we got a killer lineup tonight. You're, you're not gonna be disappointed by anybody on this show tonight. Your first comic of the evening, he runs the 955 Comedy Club show every Monday night at Bottom Up Pizza. Go check it out there. It is always a good time. But while we still got him here, give it up for Mr. Ray Bullock. People voting for Justin and for all the people here tonight, and Austin, your bartender, and salad bars. And buffets, all you can eat, and that guy wearing the hat over there. You, that's, you wear a hat like that out in public, you say yes. I do not give a fuck what anybody thinks about me. I commend you, sir. Applaud for that man. Applaud for him. That is a man that says, I am looking for a woman who has read every single Harry Potter novel. And I respect you, sir, because that is what I am looking for as well. I want me a nerd woman. I don't give a flying fuck if you can do 50. 
15 crunches, or you can name me what fuck, uh. what are major shoes. I want to know if who your fucking favorite Catching Fire character is. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Can you name all the people that were in the Fellowship of the Rings? You can't. I don't want to put my dick inside of you. That's where I am, people. I don't like normal girls. I don't like them. And a lot of guys are like, no, man, you don't understand. These girls are sexy, you know. They come home, they can be lunch day. They can be in one of my button-up shirts. <laughs> Thanks for trying, fucker. <laughs> With my nerd girlfriend, I can come home and beg Rogue from the X-Men, Princess Leia, all the nights I'm feeling squirrely, Baloo the Bear from the Jungle Book. We can make it happen, people. It's the bear necessities, simple bear necessities. I picked a raw paw. Moving on! <laughs> Want to talk to the gentleman in the room for a quick second. Let me talk to you fellas. Let me speak to you real quick. Stop, and I repeat this, stop trying to get into a three-way with lesbians. Fucking stop it. You're embarrassing us. Lesbians do not like having sex with men. I know. Porn lied to all of us. Get the fuck <laughs> over it. All right? Do not mess with lesbians. They will fuck your shit up. They will. I have been with a couple of bisexual girls, that's fine. You want to get back at your father, I'm there for you. <laughs> However, lesbians, they do not want to fuck you. Here's what's going to happen if you try to get in the middle of two lesbians trying to have sex. She's going to cut your face with her box cutter, wipe it off on the flannel shirt she has out in the truck, build a deck faster than a Mexican, and then she's going to fuck your wife. That's how that's going to work out for you. Do not do it. It's not a good thing for you. It's bad. Ugh. Happy to be home in Virginia. I just got back from Philadelphia. Where are my fellow Virginia people at? Virginia! Hello, Virginia. Okay, uh, this is my home. I love it. It's great. Not only that, but Virginia, the former capital of the Confederacy, is joined in saying that all marriage is legal. That is fucking awesome. I think that is great. Not, yeah, not only because it is pretty much fucking basic human rights, but now we have the making for the greatest television show of all time, Gay Divorce Court. Yeah. How funny is that shit gonna be? I'm not talking about like, you know, like just two people going up like my best friend, one of my best friends, Lucy and her partner. No, I don't want to see them. I want to see the bottom of the fucking barrel. I want to be like the Jerry Springer show. I want the guys with the yellow combat boots and the bedazzled shirt that says cum dumpster on it. That's what I want to see on that show. No gavel, just a big purple dildo. Just banging. Like, what are the cards? With your celebrity judge host, John Travolta. Just fucking going to town. I'm going to do a movie with Nicolas Cage. Oh my God, it's going to be fucking beautiful. And it would come on after Maury. It would have to come on after Maury. It would be like, find out if you're the father and who's your daddy. It would be fucking great. It would be wonderful, people. Join with me. Cats and dogs living together. It'll be anarchy. Oh, just pick that up anytime. It's good. Oh, we're going to get out of here soon, folks. But who's hungry? I am. I'm fat. Uh, where are my fat people? Woo! Brother, yes. You're sitting at the nerd table. How did I guess? <laughs> There's a Twinkie. No. Uh, I'm alone in high school again. No. <laughs> I'm proud to be fat. Hey, this is America. We're supposed to be fat. Hey, if you're skinny, that means your mama didn't love you enough to feed you. She wanted you to die. That's what happened. I, I, am, I am proud of my fatness, but like I said, I'm also an American. American. America. So when I see someone fatter than me, I judge them. That's how that works. <laughs> Because I know how this happened, people. I'm well aware. There have been many a night I said a tub of strawberry cake frosting and a pint of Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey ice cream sounded like a good idea. So when I see someone fatter than me, I have to ask, what the fuck did you do? Did you walk into Golden Corral and go, okay? <laughs> They need to change, and Golden Ground needs to stop. They need to change your name to Type 2. Just fucking go with it. Just, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you've been training tonight, let somebody else drive you home. You plan on doing other things tonight. Don't fuck up, fuck safe. See me open up for Lee Camp this Saturday at the 955 play. Thank you, good night. Rainbow, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he actually brought up something really cool. This Saturday night, uh, tickets are still on sale. Ray's going to be opening for Lee Camp. He's one of the writers of The Daily Show, uh, also Richmond native. So go out and support that show. Go check it out. The boys are coming home. But uh, your next comic, he's already here. He's already home. I love this dude. Uh, one of my favorite newcomers to see. Give it up for Mr. Mike Engel. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Engel. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, you're excited. That's good. That's good. Um, because 
You should be. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this new movie coming out called Jurassic World. <laughs> it's like, Ju yeah, okay. It's like Jurassic Park, but the entire fucking world. It is going, <laughs> you know, feel how you're gonna feel about it because honestly, Hollywood has ruined many childhoods throughout the years. Uh, I got fucked on uh, Transformers. I got fucked on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, we don't need all these reboots. But if you can't beat them, join them, I say. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've wrote this song for the original Jurassic World soundtrack. It's gonna be sung by Cray Sean. And, uh... <laughs> I got the hook for y'all right now. Here it goes. This is gonna be on Jurassic World. Dinosaurs at the mall. Dinosaurs at the mall. Can you really find sneakers to fit those talents? Can you really find sneakers to fit those talents? And we be sounding like dinosaurs at the mall. All right, so maybe you guys haven't, have you, you've heard Gucci Gucci? She's like, and we be sounding like, that's the Krayshawn joke of that dinosaur in the mall bit. I had to explain it. That's okay, you guys aren't into the internet apparently, but that's fine. Uh, I like, uh, I just also like the idea of letting you guys know, like raptors, like, pillaging around a mall trying to find footwear. I instilled that in your brains. And you laughed, so I'm glad. That's good. Uh, so I'm a nerd. Uh, I like Jurassic Park and all that. I like Dungeons and Dragons as a kid. I was in a, a Costco, which is like a warehouse disguised as a mall. And that's because I was in the food court of a Costco getting pizza. And uh, there was this lady with a pin on her hat and it said mad, like mothers against drunk driving. But upon, upon closer inspection, I saw that it said mothers against dungeons and dragons. <laughs> and I was 11 years old. And at, at that time I was like, fuck this lady, dude. Like, I rolled 20 side to die and use my imagination with my friends. What's your 11 year old doing? Probably watching too much porn because you're a horrible person, let alone mother. So fuck you. Let your kids do what, you, what they want, which is horrible. I'm glad there's no parents in here. We got that out of the way. Because that's horrible parenting advice from a 24-year-old man-child. And... Yeah, no, so I saw this and was offended. I, as an 11-year-old, I didn't know much about uh, drunk drivers. I did know a lot about dragons. And fun fact about dragons, they don't fucking exist. Drunk drivers do, and I'm pretty sure they are more harmful to your children than a monster manual could ever be, so. Uh, I also like pizza. Pizza is high up on the list with all my nerd shit. It's the food, it's food for nerds is what it is. I was walking around uh, the fan recently and I saw my pizza guy and he was walking down the steps of the lucky pizza recipient when he uh, notices me, recognizes who I am because of the frequency during which I order pizza, and he engages in, with me and says hello. At that moment, I was like, fuck, I'm gonna be alone forever, dude. Like, it was not in my adult life plans to be best friends with the pizza guy. That's just not what I wanted for myself as an adult. But uh, I'll, I'll end on this. Uh, in middle school, you're gonna see people's dicks that you didn't want to see. It's just a part of growing up. You're comparing and contrasting. And so I had a couple friends who were doing this. Uh, out of all of them, I had the biggest balls. We gave each other other superlatives. But I had the biggest balls. They were like, you should see a doctor probably. And so uh, my friend was like, oh, your balls are the size of cantaloupes. And my other friend was like, yeah, they're like antelopes. They have horns. And on that note, I was like, if maybe if you could castrate me and throw my balls in the middle of the pentagram, that'd be pretty metal. <laughs> you could call them satanalopes. <laughs> and all right, guys, I've been Mike Engel. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Mike Engel, ladies and gentlemen. Such a ball of fun, that kid.
God damn it. Give it up one more time for Mike Finkel. All right?